Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Colin is a little tired. He's a little tired, so please forgive him. Mm. But it's the only time we can do the podcast. It's 10.30 p.m. at night. Colin, how are you? I'm good. Like you said, a little tired, but that's okay. No Red Bull tonight? No Red Bull? No, I'm trying to stay away from caffeine. So so what I did this morning... Mm. So I've I've been buying those little uh, naked bottles of of like fruits, like those like, smoothie things. Yes, exactly. And so I've been drinking, you know, a little bit. Now, I haven't been drinking full the full things every day, but I've been drinking a bit every day. This morning, I was like, I have a leftover Red Bull, and I don't drink Red Bulls very often. But I had just taken a trip to to Mobile for our AU tournament that we won, by the way. Look at that! Look at that ring. Where'd he go? There it is. Imagine those are real diamonds. Real diamonds. Imagine. Look at it. Um. Anyways, so I had one, and I was like, "What? Let's just spritz some uh, Red Bull in here." Fantastic. That's disgusting. best decision. That is so disgusting. Red Bull and mango, with yeah, all the other stuff they had in it. So it's ridiculous. I was living good. I <laughs> that is ridiculous. I've, I've, let's just say it's been one of my most productive days ever. So. Yeah, that did it. That did it. I don't know. Knowing you as a productive person, this was not one of your most productive days. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a great day today. Um, but anyways, Colin, um, I we had this idea back in February. Yes. We had this idea in the February. Pre-tournament. I, I looked it up and was like, man, what if we just ranked every player of the McCaslin Hodge era at North mm-hmm, Texas? Mm-hmm. And we went through like a preliminary list after the podcast one day in February. And we we're like, oh, this is fun. This is fun. Well, on Twitter, after the tournament, after John Calipari left Kentucky, someone did it for Kentucky. And I was like, they stole my idea. <laughs> Colin, he stole our idea. And a, that'd be a terrible list to have to compile. A Kentucky most talented list. Whoa. So the thing is, obviously Calipari was there since like, what, 20, 2008 or something like that? Yeah, 2009. There's like 125 players or something. And they did it, credit to them, put a lot of time in it. They got video highlights of every single player. Like one highlight for every player. I don't know how long it took them, but again, I respect people that put in effort for those big projects. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, we got to do it for North Texas now. It's our, our time is up. So here we are since 2017, since McCaslin took over in the 2017, 18 season, there have been 47 players. And there, the way I made this list or the way I compiled the bank of players was they either had to be on scholarship or and no 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 and they had to have scored a point. So there's a couple Alex Cotton players. scored a point. Yes. Did not know that. Yes. Yes. So um, I think because I looked it up and um, yes, I, I believe Cotton had a point this year at some point. He, I'm, you know, they played some bad teams, some like JUCOs or something. Um, now you're gonna need forty-seven gonna players need that year. were scholarship and scored a point at North Texas. So okay. I thought when we made this, it was going to be like longer. I thought it was going to be like 60 players or something like that. But 47 is very manageable. So, um, yeah, we're going to share our list. We did our own list, and then we aggregated them and put it together. So if there's a big big disparity, sorry, I can't speak, Colin or I will point it out, and we will debate where we have said player. There's only one player that's outside of like six spots in our list, and we did them separately. And yes. we will debate that player whenever that player comes up because it is. It's not it's even. The debate. I, don't, I don't even know why. It's the debate that is either going to make people mad for no reason or people are going to agree with with me. We had this debate in February when we first made the list. Yeah, and my, my my reasoning is correct. So let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it going. We have to start, right. start from the bottom. The worst player. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is based off of talent. I want to make sure that's clear before we get started. This is based off of talent tiebreakers i guess is like if there was like a player that's really close in talent it was like the player who did more but yeah this is based purely on this is not like who has the most championships or yeah, anything exactly. like that this is purely based off of who would i want to be on a basketball team exactly exactly so this is like yeah the best player and if it was really close like you said i i kind of gave the edge to like if they had two years of being real good at North Texas, right? Yeah, one year of, being real of course. Good. So that was kind of a little tiebreaker for me. So, but we can get into it. 
Um, the we we had the same exact bottom three, so we can just reveal all three of them at once. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, run, run, run it right now. <laughs> so so uh, here is the bottom three. Where this is how we're going to be revealing them every time. Mark, <laughs> Mark, Shaquem, and Bryce Jackson were a bottom three in that order for both of us. Um, honestly, just looking at this, I kind of want to move Bryce up just because he. I feel like he played more than the other two. So Bryce and I, okay, when doing this, I had all the stats. Like I pulled up the stats yeah. and everything for each one. Um, I do not have the stats. I'll pull up basketball reference right now for North Texas, just so I can if I want to. But um, Bryce had played a lot in 2016-17 with he played in six games for Tony Benford. Yeah. Okay. But we're only counting 2017 on. That's and true. this that comes up with AJ Lawson as well. AJ played. 2016 17 so if he you count that year we probably would have had him a little higher but in 2017 18 bryce jackson played eight games and scored two points oh okay. so and had a season high he played five minutes was his season high oh, okay so well, he can be last then don't feel too bad Sha- because Sha- i think Shaquem doing... definitely I, I yeah i definitely remember the tony benford era now yeah. shakim you know we can't Shaquem... spend this long on everybody yeah but, um, shakim i thought played more I remember did. him playing a lot in my head. I feel like, bro, there's no did he didn't. He played five games, <sighs> five. That's I brutal. thought she first. I thought Shaquem was here for two years. Was okay, it really not. It was one year. Oh man, and it was it was five games. Wow. And I could have sworn I'm like I have to be looking at this wrong, but no, it's literally one year, five games. Yep. So. Sorry, Shaquem. Uh, you could drop Shaquem. You our argument for him to be last, but um, yeah. So and then Mark. <laughs> Mark was like a Mark was like the 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 Euro guy that you want to do really well and just yeah nothing no. And then he went to Sam Houston State and I don't even think he did anything over there. So that's the bottom three. Shout out to y'all. Uh, hope y'all are doing great. Um, somebody had to be last, but here we are. All right, let's do the next three. Bryce Zephyr, Chris Morgan, and Khalil Fuller. Now, Morgan is currently in the transfer portal, correct? Yes. So I don't, so I don't feel bad about that. Um, Khalil Fuller played more than both of them for sure, right? Now, I think you had Fuller. If we want to pull up the, yeah, I'll just, I'll just name it off because I, I'll, I'll have it. Uh, I have Khalil, uh, I have Khalil Fuller at forty. You had him at forty-three. Yeah. So this is like I said, the bottom three were by themselves, and the rest were like all you know, closer. And he somehow made it on the aggregate down to 44, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I had him at 40, you had him at 43 in that area. Yeah. I think he just played more, which is why I took him higher than, than those other guys. Yeah. I don't hate that. Um, I'm mad at that. I mean, I, I don't even remember Bryce even being in the game and I don't remember Chris really being in the game. So yeah, but, Chris was, but I also, but I also saw Kolo Fuller a lot. Tony Benford, he played Tony a Benford lot. Here, again, Benford. He Tony, played a lot of minutes in Tony so, Benford's. Yeah, the Tony Benford years, he played actual like thirty-one. Games. He started twelve games. Yeah, he played. So I, that that might have that might have clouded my judgment a so slight 2017, bit. Twenty seventeen, eighteen, he played seventeen games, started zero, played four minutes per game. Hey, that's seventeen games. Scored fourteen points on the season. So, that's, yeah, that's an accomplishment. Yeah. So that's that's the next three there. All right, uh, thirty-nine through forty-one. I hate that we're going by threes. This is terrible. Yeah. All right, can you, all right, we'll can go you just two. reveal we'll go. the forty and then go by okay. five? That'd be. We'll go by better. one at a time. No, let's let's go by one at a time when we get Rashid people, Brown. When we get to people that we can actually talk about. Because let me tell all you, right. Rashid Brown, he played probably less the games than Kilo Fuller. Rashid Brown. Um, again, I don't have the direct stats in front of me, but That's I okay. remember when he signed. I talked to him on the phone. He was like, "I'm a tough Philly guard, and I'm gonna come." ready to play in North Texas and um that did where not he transfer happen. from that did not happen. I don't know. Or was remember. he a recruit? Okay. I don't remember. He, he he was a transfer from like a JUCO or something like that. Gotcha. So, oh I do remember that actually. Yeah yeah. Yeah he's from Philadelphia. Uh Anum Corpus Christi. That's where he was that's where he was beforehand. Uh yeah played two years played in twenty four total games scored a total of seventeen points. So nice Rashid Brown 40 Hamir Wright. This was a big disparity here, Colin. I had him a little bit I had him fairly higher than you. Yeah, I had Hamir Wright at uh 
I actually had him below a little fuller. You had 44, didn't you? I had him at 44. You had him at 38. Yeah. Let me just tell you, these bottom guys, they're all pretty close to the same right now. They're playing... Now, Hamir, I, Hamir has a has has a argument of being the most disappointing player. Because he was from Washington? Team. We thought we were getting a yeah. guy from Washington that was like skilled. Like, Honestly, oh, this- that's why he should be lower is because he was from Washington and they couldn't get minutes. We <laughs> thought Texas. he was going to be the truth that year. And uh, oh boy. Oh boy, he was he was not. He was I'm not standing by my decision at having it 44. Amir Wright played 11 games and I don't even think he was injured. For the season, I think he just didn't play. He played That's in eleven right. games, I believe. Yeah, so. it, good yeah. for him. Freshman Aaron Scott clearly was better than him, so I don't have a problem there. Um, all right, let's do the next five. Let's chunk this thing here. Boom! Here we go. Now we Alex get some, Cotton. Now we get some real talk. All right, Alex Cotton. He hasn't played enough. We don't really have to spend time yeah. on him. But we got Michael. We got Abdul. Uh, Christian, Moore Christian Moore is, is you know Maya. whatever, and then Maya. So I think I had Maya a lot lower than you. You have it here. I had him at 36. You had him at 32. Abdul, so fun, I had... debate, fun debate that I had, <laughs> which <laughs> we'll <laughs> obviously get into. Okay, I guess. A fun debate you had? Jemiah Simmons against Matthew Stone is a hell of a debate. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Dude, Every so what was really hard for me is like, so it's like I had to put in perspective, this is Conference USA. And who yeah. played in what conferences? But as I'm doing, it, I'm like, would, would this guy really not play over, play over Matthew Stone? Like in my head, like, <laughs> like, like I was like, after I went through my list, I was going up through names, and I was like, would this guy play over Matthew Stone? Would this guy? And so I lowered, I lowered Stone probably like four spots on my list after the fact because I had him higher yeah. at first. But you know, Maya versus Matthew Stone's definitely. I, I mean, when, I when can... you look at the stats too, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's 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 competitive. Like both like six four, six five, like guys that just like rebound and like don't really do. Like obviously, Stone can kind of. I've always been told but... that they can hit the three, but they can yeah. never hit the three. Yeah, Maya. The the reason I came with Maya above Stone for me was. Wait, uh, you have where's Stone? Uh, Stone? Oh, you mean lower than Stone? I have him ranked. Where's Stone? Is Stone up here? Yeah, here's Stone. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you I go. have. Well, look, I have Stone. I think we have in the same spot. Yeah, I have him 33. See, you but you had Jemai down here, 36. Yeah. So I had him at 32. Um, I just think Maya knew <laughs> like you could put him at the four and be like, all right, there's our four. Like he's gonna do four things. Matthew Stone, I don't know. You put him on the court, you don't really know what's gonna happen. See, I don't even think I could think that with Maya. I think that was what we always wanted to think with Maya. But it never really came to fruition. He was going to try to do those things. Um, so that's a fun debate right there. Stone versus Simmons. Maybe we should make a poll. <laughs> <Down below. laughs> and then and then we got Abdul and Michael. Michael we thought was going to be like a two-way wing. Dude. Just never. I mean, we thought yeah. he was going to be incredible. So Michael, like, we only had one year of, obviously. Yeah. He had a freshman. And that was the year they beat Purdue in the tournament. We thought my... And Michael six like was he like a six seven athletic six, seven, yeah like monster athlete and we're like this dude is the future. Then mm-hmm. he left and we don't know like the more I think about it like he went to a JUCO and he's been there the last two years. The more I think about it, it's like all right maybe it was grades or something else. Like don't want to speculate, but like it had to be something else. Yeah, because like you don't just kind of let that guy like walk, and it's not like other schools were pursuing him, so it had to be something. But yeah, Michael talent wise is that's why he's like he didn't do much this year, but like when you watched him play, you're like that guy was good. And Abdul, credit to Abdul, I think he went over to Montana State and played two years there and was a real effective player. Yeah, like eight points per game. But on North Texas, nothing. Sorry, nothing. Sorry, didn't Abdul. fit. Christian Moore, shout out Christian Moore for getting up to 36 from playing some rotation guard minutes this year. Good for him. Yeah, <laughs> now he's in the portal. Now he's in the portal. <laughs> now he's in the portal. Um. So yeah, that's I feel like that's a really good group right there. That 34 through 38 group is it really... is incredible that 34 on this list plays significant minutes this year. That's <laughs> until that's everyone got healthy. Incredible. Until yeah, got but healthy. that's the point though. It's like yeah. he still plays significant minutes. All right, let's go to 30. Yeah. All right, next four. Boom. Tope Rico, Jalen Jackson, Larry Wise, and Tyree Eady. 
Mm, what I have no, Tope. That's group, that's, right? I think I had Tope lower than you. No, I I mean I hadn't yeah, I did actually I have him four spots lower than you. So Tope was tough because Tope actually played like minutes that yeah yeah but like i like i remember him playing minutes but then i also remember him never playing any defense and that's hard to say when you're the backup to shane tamara so it was like (laughs) so i was so so it was like you were like waiting for shane to get back in to play some defense and he's not good at defense so tope at this spot's good for for the bigs it was really hard for me because i was like who this is like this is a person who i compared matthew stone with i was like who would i rather have rebounding the ball oh lord a true five not true five but like a guy that would play the five or matthew stone who shouldn't yeah. even be on the court, really, most of the time. I'm not sure. This is not a flame Matthew Stone podcast. I'm sorry, Matthew Stone. No, yeah. Yeah. And especially since he stayed and he's not transferring out. We should probably be nicer to him. Asterisk. But we don't know that yet, actually, yeah. technically. At least not yet. He's not transferring <laughs> Um, Now, Jalen Jackson here. Are you, I had him higher? Yes. I had Jalen pretty low, I think. I had Jalen at 29. Oh, you had him. You had him have him lower than me then. I had you him, had him at 36. Low. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is a big, big disparity. Jalen yes. Jackson <laughs> is another one that we just remember fondly. This man, obviously, like his freshman year played 25 minutes or 25 games, played 5.4 minutes per game. Sophomore year played 19 games, 4.8 minutes per game. And I just remember, I think whenever he was in the game, we just like, oh, wow, he's defending. He's playing hard. In two years, he scored 42 points. Yeah, no, he did nothing. But it was always really fun to have him switch out with JV on every other possession close in close games. So uh, I, I had him, I think, as high as I did because he had a special talent, whereas the guys yeah. that I have below him have, like, there's nothing that, like, I'd be like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like like some of the guys I had below him, and we'll talk about, like Larry, I even had below him. Larry should probably have a bo- above him, actually. Um, like Jaden Martinez, nothing special. Yeah. Terrence Lewis, Lewis, nothing special. Like Christian Those are Morgan. Two guys, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Edie. What a, Edie another player the, that we thought was going to be something. He might be the most for. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Might be the most forgettable North Texas starter in the past seven years. Like, <laughs> Easily, he started twenty games. He started twenty games. How many points did he score? He scored like three points a game. Yes. Like this is. He was supposed is, to be like a. He was supposed to be like a sniper. He was supposed to be a three and D guy, and yeah. he did neither one. Let me go look up his stats. He was a rebounder, is what he was. He was a body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a body on the court. An absolute just body. Um, let me pull it here. Let me get it. Tyree Edie, um, started. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Started 34 of 38 games. Incredible. Played 20 minutes per game. Took three shots per game. Shot um, 33% from three. Scored three points per game. Wow. 0.4 steals, 0.1 block. Like this is body. Tony Snell running up and down the court. <laughs> Tony Snell Literally. hit threes though. He hit 0.6 per game. So Yeah, Tony Snell actually hit threes. Oh, oh, I thought you said Edie hit threes. I was like, no, no, Tony Snell did. He did more. So, yeah, uh, that's Edie. Shout out Tyree Edie. Like, I could say Larry's Larry's more talented than Edie. Larry had the talent. Yeah, Larry Larry definitely. Larry was. Yeah, yeah, Larry, Larry, I think it was weird for him because he played a lot of. They they put him in a position that I think favored him, but he didn't have, like there was other guards on the roster. Like I think he was a really good more guard than wing, but he didn't really have a role on the team. Yeah. I mean, he played 18 games in two years. And that second year, I believe he left the team like right at the beginning of the season. So yeah, 32 points at North Texas. Um, I don't even know where he transferred to junior college or something, but yeah, he was uh, not playing. Okay. Um, Next up, next group. What are we going to here? 25? Uh, yeah. No. Hold on. I just got really confused with Larry. Larry is on West Texas A&M. Oh, is he? And he scored 40 points one day. Oh, look at year. him. He scored 40 points in February this year. Huh. Good for him. Number four ranked West Texas A&M. Four um, ranked in what is that? NAI whatever, or? Lone Star Conference. So I don't know what that is. I think that's Division Two. Good for him. I'm pretty sure that's Division Two, actually. That's good. So yeah, Larry, 
Shout out Larry. Job. Shout out Larry. All right. Let's go 25. Unless you want to go one next by one two. now. Next two. Oh, next two. Okay. <laughs> the guys Lewis. that you mentioned, Jaden, Jaden Martinez and Terrence. Yeah, Lewis. I don't really want to talk about these guys. Again, they were like dudes that we thought had a sp- – like I thought Jaden Martinez was going to be a scorer. Yeah. He was just kind of a guy that would occasionally hit a three and you'd be like, he's coming up. And then he never did. <laughs> and then Terrence Lewis, I'm going to be honest. I don't, he was He rebounded some. He did rebound. <laughs> yeah. He rebounded some. Uh, one year at North Texas, scored four points and 2.3 rebounds per game, played in 23 games. Now, he did start on the Louisiana team that made it to the NCAA tournament last year. So, shout out to Terrence yep, Lewis. This is not a Louisiana talent. I list. know. I'm just, just throwing it out there. All right, next three. Oh, this is a good one. Shane Tamara or Mulai Sissoko. All right. Let's just talk about this real quick, and let me back it up with who I have above other people. Okay, I think I have Shane. You have Shane. Shane you have Shane. Shane you have Shane at twenty five. I have what Shane at twenty six. Okay. I have Mulai twenty four. You have Mulai at thirty. So, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but Mulai is a. It's almost a Jalen Jackson situation here. Where it's no, like, it's not at all the same. Okay. Mulai plays okay. actual minutes. Was actually productive last year in the NIT. He just lost that somehow and he, still started the whole year this year. And you're trying to tell me that Shane can't play D Shane would not play in the AC. He'd be our backup big. At, at least he, Shane he, can, he'd be behind Robert. At least Shane can score the ball. Who cares if you, if you can't rebound as a big. Yeah. Are we, I'm like Mulai, Mulai 16 minutes per game this year, three points, four and a half rebounds. Yep. This is dude. He was he was passed by Robert Allen. Shane started a team good. that was bad. I know, but good gosh, at least Shane could like put the ball in the basket sometimes. Sometimes. Good lord, that was. I I just Listen, Shane's career highlight look. right now is on Instagram. Okay, so <laughs> in being seven foot ten, I don't want to hear Shane Tamara above some upstanding basketball players. No shot. <laughs> no shot. At, no actual shots of Shane, but Shane's going to watch this. This is a this is a culture program and Instagram culture is not North Texas culture, damn it. <laughs> Look. Shane the <laughs> I'm not taking this argument. I just don't think I'm sorry, Mulai that NIT run is the only thing we have from him right now. And what do we have from Shane? 1 year of him having 2 to, years. Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure it was one year. Was it one the Benford year and the and the other year? Yeah. Was Benford the year the other year? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, one year. Yeah. Shane. Okay, so we have one year of Shane on a team it's that was eight points per game, five rebounds, shot thirty three percent from three. CBI in conference USA, a bad conference USA team that got a pity invite to the CBI. I don't want to hear it. You know what? I don't even think he played in the CBI. I don't think he did either. I'm trying to remember that. Um, but anyways, Alante Holston. Shout out to Alante. I like Alante a lot, actually. Alante actually played at Indiana State and started. I liked Alante Holston. Alante, under, under Alante was a guy that if he could shoot the ball, he would play a lot of minutes. Because he was a good defender and he was a good playmaker. Really good. Um, oh, I, I remember I did a feature on Alante Holston. And uh, it was really good my freshman year. Or sophomore year. Yeah. Whatever it was. Kind of fake for having him lower than me, though, since you wrote a story for him, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay, how many? Next two? I, I don't remember who's next, so yeah. No, do you want to do the next two? Yeah, let's do the next two. All right, next two. We're getting to real names now, so we can actually real, debate real names. I think once we hit 20 is where it gets. Well, yeah, real. the one. No offense yeah. to these next four. But <laughs> Rondo Walker and JJ. Oh, Bird. I'd hate. I hate. Hold on, let me. Now I got. <laughs> Wait, what do you hate? I hate that. No, I guess I have Rondell above JJ. I think when I was like putting down JJ, I think in my head, I just had him way higher in terms of like 24 in my head for JJ is really high just because I loved him as a player so much. You know what I mean? Yes. Like talent talent level wise, he wasn't like really talented at all. He just did the most with what he had. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. Well, makes JJ, sense. JJ was amazing as a player for North Texas. JJ was, awesome. was fantastic. Great. Talk about a guy that reached his absolute potential. Yeah, you, if you're playing, if you're playing like NCAA and you see potential, and it says like 74, yeah, he hit 74 for sure. Exactly. Elite now, defender. again, awesome defender, but I do remember that year being like, 
they now they won. They went, what was what did they go? They lost seven games that year, right? It was like 20 and seven yeah. or something like that. It was 25 and seven, 16 and two in conference. And JJ Murray was starting like at the point and guard, playing lots guard, of minutes. Yeah. Like JJ was, was a, was a player 28 minutes per game. Starting 32 games. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes he was at the four for some reason. I don't yeah, know. So my head is all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <in> my head. <laughs> so JJ deserves to be high. Um, I don't think he deserves to be now. It's like DJ Draper did more to me. Yeah, like, no, I, I completely agree. Rondell Walker, I know, is only one year. But Rondell's what even clearly more talented. Rondell is like, yeah, he's just yeah, like, like Rondell you watch him play team, basketball. He's more like, talented. Right, yeah. yeah. Now JJ, I feel like this is a good spot though because I'm clearly taking him over everybody below him. Everybody below. Him. <laughs> everybody. And the only him. one that I might that I might be like maybe not would be if Alante stayed with yeah. like here and then yeah. he like played it out. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, JJ over everyone below there. Yeah. So, um, shout out to JJ, awesome player, um, the best three points per game player in North Texas. History. I didn't, I'm surprised it's that high, honestly. It was. It was, bro. He had the best jump stop I've ever seen. That man get in the paint and would come down on two feet and just boom and just sit there and wait and wait. And wait and wait <laughs> and then kick it out right before. God, that team was horrible to watch. That team was the most painful watch in North Texas history by far. But almost like a grossly fun to fun watch. It's like it's definitely like a sicko, like like you're watching you're watching a team get the most it has out of it. That well, the team. thing was that was the team that lost Louisiana Tech in the tournament because they scored 36 points. That's exactly that's what I mean. Like that was like it wasn't sustainable. Oh, it, it was wasn't. no. But they just won like every conference game, and Tyler Perry. That's when Tyler Perry was hitting shots, right? He hit the game. Yeah, like the La Tech. I mean, a bunch of them yeah. big shots that year. Yeah, I mean, the starting lineup was Tyler didn't even start. First of all, it was Ruben, JJ, uh, Drez, Thomas, and Abu. That was the start. <laughs> that was wow. Fun. So. And then Aaron Scott and Tyler Perry off the bench. <laughs> and that's all we had. Yeah, Aaron Nobody Scott before he could even do any, anything. He couldn't shoot a three and he couldn't score at all. I mean, literally nobody else played more than 11 games in that year. They played seven guys and they just rolled. Just absolutely rolled. So anyways, shout out to that team. Uh, shout out to JJ Murray. Shout out to Rondell Walker. I think mm-hmm. he deserves to be at this list. Um, we'll go to the next two because I think the next two is where the cut. I don't want to say cut off because that sounds demeaning, but like what well, top 20 is, I think, on a different level. Yeah, DJ Draper and Dangu. The next two, where did you have? Did you have somebody higher? You're looking at we both had DJ at the same spot. We had them, in the, we had both of them in the same spot. Actually, I didn't know that 21 22. Yeah, both of them in the yeah. same exact spot. So, again, I think the top 20 is by itself. Dang was another one of. Probably the most disappointing players. The thing with Dang though is that like but he was diff- good. Yeah, like he was a he was a good player that we were disappointed with because yeah. defensively he was good, but he couldn't like we were we were told he could shoot the corner three. We were told he could shoot. <laughs> yeah, and he just couldn't shoot and he didn't score. He was just he blocked some shots emphatically, which is cool. Yeah. Um but I would agree. Mm. See, now we're looking at this. Would I take him above Rondell? Maybe only for the interior presence, but I don't think he's much better rebounding than Rondell Walker was. Maybe he just had more opportunity because of the position that he was playing. But I think, like, perimeter defense, Rondell is a lot better. And then interior defense, Dang was good at blocking some shots, but post-up-wise, I'm not really sure. Well, Dang, the stats are more impressive than I think we remember them being. He finished the year shooting 64% from two and had a really. a block percentage that was 104th in the country. I don't and remember. You rebounded like very that. well. All right. I'm sorry. Dang. I'm sorry. That was dang. That's that. Honestly, dang should probably be above DJ if I'm being real. No, DJ has to be higher. DJ, DJ is another one of those players that hit the absolute peak <laughs> of his potential. Can from you a, believe from a perimeter? DJ? Listen, I remember it was t- <laughs> Tony Benford had DJ in practice one day and he was like, this guy's gonna start over all y'all if you guys don't work harder. <laughs> it was DJ. It was DJ. Look at this, dude. Like DJ, like automatic from three. Yeah. Re- pretty good, like perimeter defender. Yeah. And I mean, really, the size is the only thing that limited him. And then that one game where he had to play like 45 minutes because everyone got sick or hurt or something mm-hmm. like that. 
So hey, bro. Then he had that game against Rice where he hit six threes. Yeah, like which was overshadowed because Rose hit ten or something like eleven or something stupid. But, yeah. Um. Every single season, he shot at least forty percent from three. Right, like 41, 41, and fifty one. Shot fifty one percent on, on from volume. Three. On volume too. I mean, I don't know if. I mean, three per game. Yeah, for him though, in eighteen minutes. And, and, yeah, but he I also mean, had games where he wouldn't shoot at all because he didn't have to, and then yeah. games where it's like, all right, we got to get the ball to DJ to make something happen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Awesome player. Love DJ. It. it this makes me feel old. The fact that he his last season was 2019, 2020. Mm. We are about to be five years removed from DJ Draper's. Good thing DJ is older than me. Yeah, DJ is older. He's my age. He's my age. When no, he was a freshman when I was a freshman. I'm pretty sure he was a freshman. Or walking when I was when I. Oh, okay, so that was his fifth year. Okay, so he's older than. So he's your age then. I think he's my age. Yeah, so he's older than me. Um. So yeah, shout out to DJ. All right, this is where it starts getting real. Yeah, let's go one. Let's go. Let's go. No, let's go two by two. So then there's people to debate against. Unless you want to talk about the player individually. Let's talk about the player individually. You yeah. Know what I realized is that it shows it right here when I highlight it. I didn't notice that, and now you just ruined everything. So that's all right. Look, I'm gonna go like this. Nope, that doesn't work either. Well, that's just twenty. I hate, I hate that you just did that. <laughs> John Bugs. <laughs> well, I'll be fast next time. No, what I'll do next time is I'll highlight it. Like that. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you all go. Right, all right, cool. 20 is John Bugs. Now, Colin, I'm not going to lie. When you started filling yours out, I looked over yours, and you had John Bugs very, very high. I, I did a – what I did is I basically went through off the top of my head and then okay. went through and then was like, would I pick this player over this player or this player over yeah. this player? So so John Bugs. I had him one. 18th, and you had him 20th. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't think there's a lot to talk about with Bugs. Yeah, the is thing that... is that he was a good player on a team that's in a good basketball conference, and he had an elite skill in shooting threes. Off balance. You know, I feel like I, I, when I think of him, I was surprised that he only scored seven points per game. Oh, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, there was games where he didn't do anything. Yeah. But I think he's good at 20 here. I think this is, like I said, I this is the spot. Yeah, no, it's the a line spot. of demarcation. He is the worst of the top 20 players. To yeah. Play. And yeah, he can play defense and shoot threes. There you go. Boom. Yeah. All right. Next. Mike Miller. Ooh. Let me see Did you have Mike mean. below Bugs? No, I had, Mike had, I had Mike above. I have Mike at 17. Okay. Oh, you have him at 19. So, Mike, a redemption story. Obviously. Yeah, if he, let me tell you, he'd be lower if he didn't learn to shoot with his right hand. Um, what a story for anybody who doesn't know because we're too old now. We're Mike, old, man. Mike yeah. originally shot with his left hand, and then before the CBI, Grant basically was like, hey, because he shoot, he'd shoot free throws with his right hand, but he'd always yeah. shoot everything else with his left hand. And Grant was like, why do you shoot free throws with your right hand? He's like, well, I'm right-handed. I just always shot left-handed. And he's like, how about you shoot right-handed? And then the CBI, he just lit the world on fire. <laughs> it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then the following season, he shoots with the right hand and shoots 37% from three. And good rebounder, good defender. And now he's playing overseas still and making a living. I think, playing I think on Zach's team. Yeah, he was on the Bristol Flyers for a bit. Um, also, and, Jayden was on that team for a little while and averaged like 30s a game or something. Yeah, like that. crazy. So, Mike Miller, two years at North Texas, CBI championship, averaged 10 points per game that second season. First season, he was just a defensive player. Um, but yeah, really good player. Like, I think he's a better all around player than like Bugs. Like, I, I, well, I think when you get up to here, it's like, which player would you rather have on your team? And I think I'd take Mike over Bugs. I'm taking Mike. I, yeah. Well, it depends on the rock construction, obviously, and all that stuff. But if I'm getting Mike Miller shooting 37% from three, he does yeah. other things better than both. Yeah, I agree. So. All right. Next. AJ. Mm. This was this was interesting because I don't remember I think, where I had AJ. I think there was a little disparity from AJ, like three or four spots between us. I had AJ four spots below Michael Miller at 21. So you had you AJ had low, AJ low. 16. Do you want to talk us through your hatred of AJ Lawson? Uh, AJ was pretty good on Tony Benford's teams. And then he happened to be one of the best players on a team that was rebuilding. And then, but I mean, he couldn't really shoot the three. He only had one move inside, which is like a turnaround 
hook shot yeah. that never went in. And I mean, defensively, he was he was okay. I I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean that's I mean like I had who else did I have above him that we already talked about. I have we haven't talked about this player yet, but I have Bugs above him. I have Mike above him. We talked about Bugs and Mike. Oh, okay. And, yeah, you're saying you're I, have, I have I have other players we haven't um, talked about. Yet. So the thing about AJ, which again dating myself because I bet a lot of people forgot this or didn't know this, AJ that year had a hurt wrist. Remember that? Yeah, and he still wasn't a good shooter. Okay, so I'm just saying like. He and I mean he was never really a good shooter until I guess his... and he hit the game winner against somebody. Yeah, yeah. Early in that year. Yeah. On the kick out from Sh- Shane comes up, tosses <laughs> the ball. So yeah. yeah, AJ was tough to rank because like I think he's a good player, but he never really reached his potential at North Texas. So all right, next 17. Drez. I, hey, Dres, I also have, I also have dress above. Uh, let's do these three. Oh, that's an interesting group. So Jordan Duffy, Robert Allen, Mardres McBride is all our right. Let's seven. just talk this about honestly, honestly. We're not doing a good job for the podcast listeners, like listener wise. There's no I'm way that this is this is this can only be on YouTube. I feel like okay. Well, we have to meet our quota for podcast. So it's going to be uploaded anyway. Oh, I mean, but... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Anyways, so if you're listening on the audio side, go to YouTube. Um, <laughs> you get a visual. Give us a view. Give us our listen, and then go give us a view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15th, 16th, 17th. So just for podcast listeners now, since we're up this high. <laughs> now we're doing it. At 15, we got Jordan Duffy. 16, Robert Allen. 17, Mardrez. I think we both had everyone ranked in this order. Uh, I have Duffy above Drez, and I have I actually have Robert Allen above Duffy, and you so, have. Drez above Duffy and Robert Allen below Duffy. Duffy and Drez were tough to rank, like separate because they both averaged like 10 points per game over two years. It was like they, they averaged very similar stats. They shot the ball well from three. Duffy shot 38%, then 30%. Drez shot like it was like inverse, it was like 33, then 40 or something like that. So, like, they had very similar resumes. Um, I just think Drez is better. Like, well, we have damn. Wait, 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 wait. Where did you have? So wait, I had. Look at us doing this off the top of our head. I'm on the left. Yes. Oh, I had yeah, I had Drez above Duffy. Did I get this confused? You're Where just giving you away the list. <laughs> wow. No, no, no. It's top fifteen here. Wait, so you had Duffy? What did you have Drez? Oh, you had Drez down here. Yeah. Oh, we had a flip. So I had Drez above Duffy. Yeah. You had Duffy above Drez. I just think Drez was a better defender, first of all. Duffy's more of like a guard guard, you know, like a ball handler guard. Um, I You honestly can't really split those two up. I think, now, I think Duffy could do more offensively. They shot I agree. the same clip. Defensively, yes, for Drez, but I feel like Duffy gives you more. Now, a lot of I do players. think 15, 16, 17, I want to say those three were like aggregate when I put them together were like the exact same numbers almost. Mm. So technically, I think these are like you could just put them in any order. And but then Robert Allen is only there because he can offensive rebound. Like Robert Allen was one of the best offensive animal. rebounds in the country, and he yeah. was arguably one of the only reasons North Texas had a consistent offense when all the injuries happened this year. Oh, yeah. No, Robert so Allen is the best Robert Allen a lock for top yeah it's kind of sandwiched there between two guards so <laughs> yeah awkwardly in there all right next three all right 12 we got kai 13 abu 14 cj i believe there was some disparity where both of us had kai yeah i had kai at nine you had kai at 13 i had abu at 14 you had abu at 12 and then what was the other one cj, CJ. i had cj at 12 and you had cj at 15. so why do you have kylo so but i had them in this order on mine kai abu cj just in different numbers you had abu kai cj i had kai cj abu i think we underrate kai's season i have kai at nine so i didn't underrate anything you don't underrate (laughs) kai's season in 2022 2023 he averaged what was it 
12.3 points, and obviously got better as the year went on. He led the team in assists, 3.2 assists per game. The shooting kind of came around a little bit um, as the year went on. It was at 31%, and then in conference play was 37%. So maybe I did underrate Kai. Maybe I do have Kai too low on my list. Uh, he, I'm glad he's up to 12 still here, but like Kai was really, really good on obviously a, a very, very good North Texas team here. So actually, I don't have a problem with him. You have him at nine. Actually, I don't, I say that, but I don't remember who I have up here. So we'll see. Abu. This is where it gets tough because Abu is like oh, a real player. I had Abu lower than CJ because I think CJ this year, especially toward the end, did a lot. And I never thought Abu. Reached I was, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's not even that. Like, I feel like Abu, like in the post, like they had to give him the ball a lot in the post, but I felt like it was never a plus play. Like with Zach, it was always a plus play because Zach was able to find a guy in the corner or kick it out. Whereas Abu was kind of like in there and yeah. yeah, he had a, he could, he could score it a little bit, but there were games where you and I would get on here and it'd be like, he's shooting like 30 something percent yes. on like eight mm. shots. So I don't think, I don't think like he's good. Like I'm not trying to say he's not a good player. Yeah but I don't think he's above guys that are more consistent in every portion of their game where Abu's not. That was the thing, the difference between Abu and Zach. Zach would finish, he would end seasons and be like 63% from the field. Yeah. Abu shot 49% from the field as a junior and shot 50% as a sophomore. Like as, as a starter full-time. Those two. And that's only inside shots, which for people who don't know, that's not super great <laughs> or super that's good not, even. As honestly, a, I, that's pretty bad. For a big to shoot forty nine percent from the field, yeah. And then he goes to Xavier this year and shoots forty seven percent from the field. So it's like, what are we doing here? Also, at Xavier, he shot forty five percent from the free throw line. Jesus. Um. So I, if I amended it, I might put CJ above Abu. Abu. I think CJ like, just turned it around. CJ was God, like like it was not it was, it was not good it was not good to start but CJ yeah. at the end. Yeah, like awesome. threes, big shots, the the weird, yeah. I mean, the floater that we didn't even know he had in his bag. Like, yeah. yeah. All right, let's go one at a time here. The last 11 here. Rose. <laughs> Rose is only this low because Bernie put him so freaking high. I have I Rose seven. So it's so Colin high. has Rose, fif Rose 15. Yeah, for like there I have. Is no I have, way. Let me tell you have... why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Rose playing on a team that was not great in Conference USA won a CBI. He caught lightning in a bottle, then sucked for two more years. Bro, he was the only reason that team was competent. He was the only reason that team was competent. Does that make him the most? Do I have player? to read his stats off again? Right, you you take him over Kai. You take him over Kai. Yes, I'm taking him over Kai. You're so Nineteen dumb. and a half so points per game. Thirty-eight percent from three on nine attempts per game. Nine attempts. And in conference, he got better. 38.5% for three on almost 10 attempts per game from three. This dude was a freaking sniper. And he was – you remember the difficulty of those shots? Sure you I remember? do. He sure was I do. Because he had a green light. And then whenever it, we actually got real players on this team, he didn't have a green light anymore. And he didn't, wasn't it was, good. Okay, first of all, Rose was a little bit of a loose case. <laughs> okay. Rose. Well, he, well, he had a green light. Then he's calf – like just destroy the rest of his career at North Texas. Yes. That's part of the thing. Sorry, Bruni. We're not basing no. this off of one year. We are basing this off of. No, we're not. We would take. Yeah. I take team. Kai over Rose. I'm taking Rose. Kai, Kai, Kai's not turned the ball over. Kai can score in more than one way. Cause Rose, the only thing he'd do is drive in the paint, hit you with what a pump fake and get blocked. More than one way, bro. He shot 10 threes a game. Who cares how he scores? And he shot 90% from the free throw line on five per game. I'm that going is back that. and on, also his second year, like the year you say is bad, which it wasn't a good year. He averaged 10.7 points per game. Uh, now, albeit didn't shoot the ball very well, but he still scored 10 points per what, game. What about the third year? What about the third year where he averaged third year? We don't even points. have to count, and he three still point, has two years. 3.2. He still, even if game. you average out those two years, he still had a better career than Kai. We're not, like, but I'm talking about in terms of talent. We're not talking about stats here. Okay, talent, talent, talent. Kai's not averaging 19.5 points per game. He doesn't need to average because he has a way. DJ averaged more points than Roosevelt Smart that year. 
DJ I played I more minutes than Roosevelt Smart that year. I don't care year. about that third year. I don't. Stop. Why? You're, Why? You're it's part of it. It's part of it. Third year, but it's you're not talking, about the, you're not talking about the first year. You're not talking about the first year. I don't need to talk about the the first year. The team was not a good team. I I don't care. They had they got the twenty wins. Twenty because wins because they had to play a series against another team or a bunch, a bunch of teams in the freaking CBI. They were eight and ten in conference, seventh in conference USA. That's All right. bad. Here's, I I want to get to one of these players we have up here because Roosevelt Smart at his peak, and even if you just take again, whether you think the peak like and valley like you comes to a middle and you get to an ag, like a, a median level here, that median level is still higher than Kai and CJ Nolan. I completely disagree. That's for sure. How is Roosevelt? How's Roosevelt Smart? Peak Roosevelt Smart doing this tournament that they just played? He's not gonna. He's not doing anything. He's hitting threes. He's look. You know, he's looking. He's looking just like John Bugs. He is John he's Bugs. Better than John Bugs. Get the he's get John out Bugs. of here. He's John he's Bugs. Forty percent from three on Bugs, ten attempts per John game. Bugs John Bugs couldn't even get a shot off in half John, of these games. John Roosevelt Smart's gonna get a shot off in any of these games. Yes, bro. He was falling over. Look, dude. He was falling over, hitting threes like this. He was like shoo, and it went in. Did he, grad, did, did I don't he grad know transfer or did he just leave or just graduate? Rose, he, he graduated because he transferred in from a uh, oh, yeah, 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 the yeah. first year. No, nah, get out of here. Roosevelt Smart, one of at his peak, one of the five best players in North Texas in the past seven years. But we'll take the aggregate Not at all. That's so stupid to say. Aggregate wise, so stupid top to 10. Say. So stupid to say. Colin is the reason he's at 11. We'll see. Well, people will. People will. Discuss. And I'll be right. People will discuss. All right. Next, James Reese taking James Reese over. Uh, <laughs> I think Rose. You, you, take, you take it. You taking Rose over James? I think I had them very, very close on my list. Where did I have them? I had James Reese ten. You had, had James, James Reese 11. eleven. Yeah. You had Rose four spots yeah. higher than a player who was <laughs> actually good at the game of basketball. You are underestimating how great he was that year. Rose was great that year for an eight and ten team. Oh Lord, you act like you put you swap out Reese and Rose on that team, and it's any different. It's not. Except Reese, except Rose. Reese can play two. defense. Was way more athletic. Rose was, was a rim threat. Was four of ten from three every game. You know how hard that is to do when you're the only scorer. Okay, and then when you lower it down to five, he is one of five every game. Okay, woo. He didn't have a good end of his career. I know I'm not arguing that, but he was Rose he was really good his, for on an eight and ten team that had no other choice. Oh, uh, he could have missed all those shots. Sure, he could have, but he didn't. He didn't. But he didn't. But then, when better players got on the team, he just didn't play well. I mean, that's just I, how it, it was. was a different player. He was a different player. Injury, and I just don't think he was locked in anymore by the end. Okay, of the so that's part of the thing, and he can't be that high. Okay, thank you. Anyways. <laughs> Um, James, James Reese was locked in on this team, and it's just James Reese is a better like basketball player now, like for his career. James obviously. Reese is a better basketball player the whole time he was at North James Texas. James Reese went to South Carolina and was the best player on South Carolina's team like that next year. Like, yeah, he James Reese was better than Roosevelt Smart any year of his career. I just don't think that's. I just disagree. Such a, I disagree. I think that Rose year was better than any James Reese year. As a basketball player, James Reese is better. I mean, yeah, Reese is a better defender, obviously. Oh, we're talking about talent level. Talented, talented. Bro, James scoring is the better. ball is a big part of basketball. Sure it is, but he wasn't good at anything else other than hitting, what shooting is... a three over his shoulder. <laughs> 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 the best shot in the world. That boy. <laughs> uh, you couldn't block it either. That's the best part is that they defended and you couldn't block it because he was falling over and shooting like this. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Uh, but yeah, Reese, definitely top 10 player. Even though I had him at eleven on my list, this is where it started getting tough because you, James Reese at ten, that is a hell of a top ten. Sure is with That's Rose a, outside of it. <laughs> Honestly, it's a really good top like fourteen. I need like you a, every player up here because you <laughs> the next three players you need to tell me why you had Rose above them. I've already told you why I had Rose above them. And Rose averaged. I'm waiting for the game. next three because the next three are worse. He averaged 19 per game on. It doesn't 40%. matter if he averaged 19 a game. How does it not matter? It's a part. It's, 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 what? 19 a game? It's like saying, oh, this player averaged 19 a game on the worst team in Conference USA. 
They weren't the worst team. They were very respectable, eight and ten. Seventh. They were seventh in conference USA that year. Okay. That's not bad. That's respectable. That's respectable. You act like they were like Tony Benford teams out here. Jesus. Mo Gibson. Number nine. Um very, very good player. Very good player. Very good player. Um I had Mo lower than you. So you had him I had him eleventh. Eleventh? I had him ninth. Mo his three well, two years in North Texas, first one he got hurt. Stepped on campus and immediately was a freshman. Uh, a starter, sorry, as a freshman. Yeah, no, he the was cold. Years, the next two years shot thirty nine percent and thirty nine percent from three on seven attempts per game. Seven yeah. and a half and seven attempts per game. Awesome shooter. Uh, averaged 12 and a half points and 14 points, 14 and a half points. That 2019, 2020 team I talk about a lot was the best offensive team North Texas had. Phenomenal. Um, yeah. I mean, he was not a great creator, but I didn't really care. He could shoot the hell out the ball. I loved him. All. Great score. Eight is Aaron Scott. Now, Aaron Scott, I had significantly lower than you, I think. If you, you had Aaron up. Scott at 10, I have Aaron Scott at 6. Yeah. I'm sorry. Why is he 6? Because he's an NBA-level defender. He's not. Like, okay. You said talent. That's what we're ranking him off of. Bro, defensively, this – defensively, I don't even think, like, he was, like – I don't think he was a better defender here at North Texas than Thomas Bell. Which I know we have Thomas Bell above him, but like he averaged 1.1 steals and 1.3 blocks. Like that's good. That's good. But I think when you watch him though on defense, like, like, like Thomas is obviously a good defender, but that I feel like this year, I, I think this isn't this year. It's more of an individual defense. Whereas obviously, I mean, obviously the whole team's good defensively, but like a lot relied on what Aaron could do, especially like chase down blocks, whatever. Whereas the teams that Thomas Bell were on, everyone was a good defender. It was more of a team defense, and Thomas was a product of that. I think when people see Aaron Scott, they say that guy should be a good defender, and he is a good defender. But like, is he a great defender in a way that makes up for him shooting sub like? 40% from or hold on, let me pull up the exact numbers. I don't want to be I don't want to be incorrect in my um numbers here. Where was I? Aaron Scott. Yeah, bro, in conference he shot 41% from 2. Hmm. Like I he shot 40% from 3, which is great. Again, great. Um shooting like four a game, shot 40% from 3 uh shooting four a game in conference, which is cool. But like we've all we the whole time we just wanted Aaron Scott to do more. Yeah. And he never did more. Seton Hall last game of the season, four points, three fouls. Florida Atlantic last conference and uh, the conference tournament, nine points, four fouls. Yeah. And then that's probably recency bias on my part. Against LSU, remember his dad t- tweeted at us, be like, How was that for, for a game? He scored uh 14 points with zero fouls, uh, five rebounds, and we're like yeah, awesome. Let's do it again. Let's do it against Seton Hall. No, fair enough. I'll 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 I'll, die, I'll not die on this hill like I'll die on the Roosevelt Smart Hill. You're right. So I just yeah, Aaron. I had him at what eleven? You said ten. Uh, you had Aaron at ten. Yeah. I had him at six. And yeah. now looking at this, I'd probably put two other players above him. Yeah, so something like that. Um, all right, next one. Thomas Bell. Yeah, I had to have. Th- I think I had Thomas at five. You had Thomas at six. I had six. Thomas at eight. Dude, this we don't now. I need you not to underrate Thomas Bell. I didn't underrate him that much at all. <laughs> I I underrated him by two players. Thomas Bell, as in that last year in twenty one twenty two, where they went twenty five and seven and sixteen and two in conference. Thomas Bell led the team. In, let me make sure I have this right. Rebounding, assists, field goal percentage, 
uh, I'm sorry, two point field goal percentage. Um, second in points. And where is it? Steals. God leading assists just tells you how that offense was. Yes, exactly. Two point seven assists win. on dribble downs, basically. Dribble downs. <laughs> Sixteen and two in conference on dribble downs. That was all Thomas Bell. That whole team was just Thomas Bell. All conference defense, all conference uh, team. Yeah, that guy was really, really good. So I like Thomas Bell. At, definitely, I think Thomas Bell is better than Aaron Scott at North Texas. Easily. Yeah, I've, I've conceded that. I've, I've already conceded. I'm sorry. No, I apologize. Okay. It's okay. Shot 63% from two as a, as a sophomore, by the way, Thomas Bell. That boy was cooking. And also shot he, his first two years, shot 37% from three and 38% from three. And then uh, in the year, I believe it was, he's he hit one of the threes to beat West Kentucky in the mm-hmm. tournament. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, yeah, that Thomas Bell. Yeah, that corner three, or was it a left wing three? Wing three. Yeah, wing All three. right, six. Let's try to rip through these because we've heard going for long enough. Ruben Jones. I had Ruben higher than you. Yeah, you had Ruben four. I had Ruben five, actually. Five. You had Ruben eight. I think you underrated Ruben because I think we, I think when we, I think Ruben's been here so long, it's just like, like he's not, he's not flashy, but he does things that like make you go, whoa. He's yeah. six five, defends at an all conference level, can hit the three, can hit the two occasionally. <laughs> it depends on what kind of game he's having, but playmaking wise, and just the ability to run an offense. I think he's he's pretty close to Javion, if not Javion's level in terms of just being yeah. able to control an offense as a guard. And being 6'5 and able to defend like he's able to, I think I think he's higher. He should be higher for you. The offense just never fully came around for me. I don't really know if that's his fault. It is his fault. Like you mean he had the ball offense? Oh, he had mean, the ball in his hands plenty of times. But and we've sure. seen we've seen Tyler Perry, we've seen Javion, we've seen Jason Edwards. Oh, you we've mean, first, you mean like his own him. offense? Yeah, his oh, oh like okay. we yeah. Hunt yeah, 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 I, got, I, got, I got what you're saying. Guards at North Texas, which should be their pitch in the transfer world, guards at North Texas have plenty of opportunities to score the ball. He never got to that point all around. So that's why I have him at eight, you said, right? Yes. So which is still I mean, yeah, he's a great player. He's gonna he's the all-time leader in wins in North Texas for a reason. He's, we love Ruben. Like, he's a great player. Just when you get to these top six numbers, it's hard to – top ten, it's hard to disseminate. To, uh, See, I don't know. Like, this year – I know. I mean, I know we watch games. It's just, like, 12 points, one and a half steals, four assists, four rebounds, shot 30 – shot 41% from three. Two was not great at 38%. Yeah. But – I'm not mad at it. I think he's definitely top six or top seven, even though I had him eighth. Like I don't have a problem with that. Um, Ryan Woolridge, though. Yeah, this is a player. This this is where I went back and forth a little bit because Ryan, when you watched him, like he was clearly the best athlete on the court almost yeah. all the time. It's Who's a better defender, Ryan Woolridge or Ruben Jones? Ryan's so much more laterally quick than yeah. Ruben, Ruben is, but. It, Ruben's I don't have stats in front of me, but Ruben's hands I feel like are better than Ryan's. Whereas I think Ryan was just able to stay in front of you. A I lot. think Ryan averaged more steals to be fair, but he probably did. Uh yeah, I feel like one year he averaged like one and a half to a game. I he mean Ruben Ruben nine his last year at North Texas. Steals. Ruben averaged one and a half this year. So that's a wow. good debate, right? That, that is a really good debate. Really good. Like because I mean Ryan, like Ryan's quickness was the reason why he was able to go in Zaga and then yeah. go to the G League, yeah, and do what he's done. Yeah. The problem is the only thing that really held him back was his three point shooting. I mean, because he could get in the air, he could do whatever yeah. he wanted. Yeah. That's tough. But no, I think I, I I had Ryan lower on this list than I should have. Ryan, I had at seven. He needs to be higher on that list for me. But that is a really tough argument, actually. How tall was Ryan? Six three. Mm. Yeah, six three. He had long arms though. Yeah. So what a good player. A uh, good player. That's a really good player. Um, all right. Four. 
This sucks. Yeah. This is this is where we, I think we go chalk the rest of the way. I think we go chalk. Yeah, I think we go the same. Yeah. Okay. Before. So you can just unleash them if you want. Um. No, we'll, we'll spend some time on each one. Zach okay. Simmons. I I know like him and Ruben Jones are going to be the two guys that we associate with in terms of like those eras. Like Zach Simmons was the first era. Ruben Jones was like the second era. Um. In terms of just being the glue guys. Uh. You could maybe I don't know throw Thomas in there if you want to, but like those are the two. And Zach, the fun thing about watching Zach play was watching him develop in four years. From like every he added something, you know. From yeah. the, I think second year, first year, second year, he stopped fouling as much, right? Second year, third year, he learned how to pass out of the post. I remember writing a story on that. Third year to fourth year, I remember him being able to shoot the mid range jumper and even the three occasionally. Not like, even that, even even from second to third year, he learned to actually like defensively, we thought he was not good, especially yeah. whenever like backdoor passes or whenever mm-hmm. someone cuts. And I mean, he just improved in every way. And then to mention playmaking, it's like, I mean, that that's what made that offense really run that yep. year. Yep. So yeah, Zach Simmons, fantastic player. He's the one I think of when I think of North Texas basketball, honestly. Like in terms of yeah. like just a pillar. Yeah. Zach Simmons um three tyler perry now some people might get mad at us colin because there's two people above him yeah some people might be mad at us for having Tyler. i mean i think there's an argument that you could put zach zach or ryan above him i think so too i wouldn't be mad at. i mean ruben ruben's close but the scoring potential no i think like as an overall player but like tyler i mean to give him his flowers first like he's gonna hit any big shot he needs to hit He's an average 15 a game, hit threes. Thing is, is that he was defensively, he was a liability, even though we tried his hardest, but like he didn't he didn't have the the body to be uh to be a bass like yeah. to be a player like Ryan. Um, and if we want to talk about Ruben like Ruben defensively, and then shooting on the inside, obviously that's not gonna be a strong suit at five foot nine. But I think what brought him up here was just his tenacity and ability to hit the big shots. Yeah, he kind of like embodied a North Texas player in terms of being a winner. And that was yeah. always great because he found a way. And I mean, I know like he shot 40% from three um, as a that first year he was on campus, but like he didn't have to do much else. Like I said, it was a lot of ty- uh, Thomas Bell mm-hmm. dribbling around. Uh, and he then shot that, 41% the next year. Yeah, he shot 41% in both of those. And he was just like a three point sniper, really. But, um, Still had a lot on his plate, 17 points per game um, as a in that second year at North Texas. So, uh, yeah, great player, all-conference player, two-time all-conference player, all-conference six-man of the year, all-conference player of the year, uh, conference USA player of the year in 2022-23. So, yeah, man, he's awesome uh, player. All right, two, Jason Edwards. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately – only one year in North Texas. Um, unlike, shoot, who else? One year. He's the only one besides Kai, I guess. The other ones have all spent at least two years in North Texas. Yeah. Um, and so that's what makes it weird putting him two, is that he only had one year. But, but I mean, there was clear times this season where you're watching him and you're like, oh, this guy's a little different. Like, he's not, he didn't, he didn't hit big, like his biggest shots as Tyler. Obviously, Tyler's always going to be. Yeah, the clutchest player, but like Jason, at like in comparison, Tyler made one point one and a half two pointers a game. Jason averaged almost four and forty nine percent. And the thing and is, he, he, attempted, he got better. And then he still attempted seven threes a game and made almost three of them. So, yeah, in conference play, he got even better too. It went up to twenty two points per game, eight three points attempts. Uh, he made four and a half twos per game. Got to line five times, like. We know how ravaged that roster was, and for and him, he could score on all three levels. Yeah, he was just a better all around scorer than Tyler Perry. Like, I I don't think that's a hot take. I don't think anybody like we remember the Tyler Perry moments more because there were there were better moments. There were more signature shots, signature wins with Tyler Perry, but player wise, like Jason was the better player. Like if if that team was healthy last year again, maybe we have some of those moments, right? If Jason mm-hmm. Edwards, if you swap Jason Edwards and Tyler Perry, I think you get the wins that Tyler got. Still, like it's just he had the ball in his hands so much more, and he had to de- 
to do so much more on offense. So um, I'm interested now. Let me look up. Yeah, Tyler Perry was never – I'm looking at his two years at North Texas. He was 483rd and 420th in usage percentage. Tyler mm-hmm. Perry was. This year, uh, Jason Edwards was – 52nd in usage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just a different. Yeah. Only while turning the ball over two times a game. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and number one, JV. Yeah. Man, this the was, man himself. This was not hard at all. Uh, the man who came up and yelled at me after they won the uh, tournament to send them to the NCAA tournament. Um, Would have gone twice. Would have gone twice because they won the regular season tournament against Western Kentucky in uh, 2020. 2021, they win it, sprints over. And um, I don't even remember what he said. What did he say? It was like, um, I don't know. I was on the court. So, yeah, I know. I have the video still. It was something like, what do you guys say now or something like that? Or, yeah. Um, but they did it. And Javion, player of the year, conference USA male athlete of the year, uh, unreal, just. Every time they needed a bucket, got in the paint, hit the floater. Um, a, a tough, tough matchup for guards like six five and or six yeah. four, six five, and could shoot the ball, could hit the mid range, could hit the floater, get to the rim, get to the foul line. Um, yeah, he was, he was the one man. He was absolutely the one. Um, Javion yeah. Hamlet, fifteen four and five, basically. That's crazy. Yeah. 16 if you want to round up shot 37 percent from three top 75 in the country in assist rate yeah on, on an offense that grant and ross obviously center around paint touches and we had just got done like the next two the next year was the year where it was just thomas bell doing getting those dribble downs like before that it was zachary simmons right getting those yeah. post touches getting in the paint it then turned into jv on hamlet getting two feet in the paint and yep. spraying out the shooters or finishing himself. He was incredible. Like the, the two years with Javion, um, what was it? They finished 34th in offense in 2020 and then in, uh, finished 101st in offense that next year. And then again, they were so low because they had a, like they kept losing games. Remember they ended the year. They ended the game bad. And then they just r- rolled off that real off that yeah. whatever four game streak. So, yeah, so Javon Hamlet, number one. There it is. There's the list. Top 40, I forgot, what is it? 47? 47. Seven. Yeah, 47 players. The Every single player that's played for Ross or Grant that is either on, that is on both on scholarship and scored a point. So there you go. We'll have more to add to the list next year because it's going to be a completely different roster next year. So <laughs> it's true. I'm not sure we'll do one next year, but there's the list. I feel like this is a good mark as it turns with like a, the end of an era. No, for sure. I think some of them that are going to be interesting for people to think about is Ryan being so high, just because he didn't really like they didn't accomplish anything. They but didn't if, win with him, yeah. But like if you just watched him play, he was clearly, yeah, he was clearly a tier above talent wise. A lot of the players, um, obviously Rose is going to be a talking point. Mm, Jason. Tyler. Yeah. Shane tomorrow. Shane tomorrow. <laughs> so you know, yeah. I, when I was looking up Shane tomorrow's stats earlier, I typed in Shane tomorrow into Google, and the first thing that came up is Shane tomorrow's sister, <laughs> like in the autofill. And I was like, all right, let's just, <laughs> let's just chill out. <laughs> all right. Wow. That went way longer than I thought I was going to go, but that's all right. It was fun. All good fun. Um, yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, later on, maybe take a week off or something um, from the grind. You know, Colin's got a busy life nowadays. I'm working um, 10 to 6 now, so it's hard for us to schedule these podcasts. I know. I know. It's very difficult. But, yeah, uh, thank you all for joining us. We'll be back. Uh, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. If you're listening on the audio side, uh, I don't know how you got through it, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, if you if you did not click to YouTube, then. Yeah, I, I need to put a more power at to the you. beginning. So um, we'll do that. But yeah, thank you all for joining us. We will talk to you later.